Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. I'm your girl, Jessie Mae Peluso. How you doing? How you living? How you learning? How you loving? I'm coming off of a weekend of shrooms and possibilities and my soul integration celebration with all of my friends. We chilled at an Airbnb all weekend and it was freaking delightful. We're going to get into that. We're also going to answer some questions. It's a Dr. P episode. If you guys have any questions for Dr. P, hit us up. Sundays and Mondays on my Instagram story, Jessie Mae Peluso on Instagram. Or if you want to email us, email your questions or concerns, things you need advice of for at Comedy at gmail.com. And we will read your question or concern or whatever advice you need on the podcast. And if you want to watch today's episode, you can go to youtube.com forward slash Jesse May Peluso to watch my facha, to see my adorable face. Thank you guys again for um, another week of your listenership. If you'd like to leave us a rate, a review on Apple iTunes, it would be greatly appreciated. Totally appreciated. Want to hear about what you guys think about the pod. Sorry for all the pop and peas, the pop and Pelusos. Well, this episode is all advice driven questions answered by the one, the only board uncertified with a PhD and THC an open mind an open heart and an open hole, a soul hole. The one, the only, the severely uneducated Dr. Peluso. Sharp Tongue Podcast. Beep, 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 beep. You're listening to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse May Jessie Peluso. Mays. It's a personal look. Well, it's not really a look because it's a podcast. I'm already fucking this up. This is kind of like a verbal comedy diary. A deep look into the crevices of my mind. It's going to get dirty. You might cry. you probably laugh. Hopefully you'll laugh. The whole point is for you to laugh, but you also might cry. I talk about my family. I talk about farts. farts. I talk about love, loss, comedy, how hard it is to make it in this biz. I'm a fucking professional. Each week it's something different. Sometimes I have a guest host. Sometimes it's going to be a movie companion episode. Sometimes I just ramble about the bullshit I dealt with the week before. You never know what you're going to get. It's raw, uncut, and funny. It's me. Hey everybody, how are we fucking feeling? How are we doing? Welcome to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. Oops. Oh, and dogs are barking. Hold on. We don't bark. We don't bark. They'll probably bark. That's just the way it goes. How's everybody feeling? How we doing? I'm coming off of a birthday celebration weekend. I believe I told you guys about it, that I was going to celebrate my birthday, which technically was September 16th on September 30th as to celebrate my father's birthday, which is September 30th. I myself was supposed to be born on that day, but they yanked me out early or I arrived early, which probably gave way to how I am as a human being. Um, not that I normally arrive places early, but I march to the beat of my own drum and I create my own reality. So, you know, my due date wasn't good enough for me. <laughs> I was like, when do you want me to show up? Mm, that doesn't work for me. I'm going to get there when I want to get there. So, yeah, that's pretty true to my nature. But since I was turning 40, I thought I want to celebrate my birthday and my father's birthday. I had never done that. It never occurred to me to try to combine those holidays together. And I think instinctively I wanted to, or had the epiphany rather to do it because I wanted to feel a closeness to my father that I had, hadn't felt in a while since, you know, posthumously since he's been deceased. And it was, it was great. I had some of my closest friends there with me. I called it my soul integration weekend, which it really uh, very much was. 
integrating my soul with my closest friends and family and a way to connect with the people who matter to me most and have a little bit of a digital break, which felt good and stressful all the same. If I'm being completely honest, I definitely acknowledge my participation in the social media addiction. I myself, I don't consider myself a social media addict, but I do understand how it can suck you in and have definitely been sucked in. So I wanted to peel my soul away from the digital monster and have a weekend of soul integration and psilocybin integration, to be completely honest. Definitely integrated that psilocybin into my soul so that my soul integration could be more successful. The psilocybin was the conduit to the integration. That's where it's really a plant medicine where you can realize its value in expanding your mindfulness and increasing your interconnectivity and realizing your connectivity with others. Psilocybin is an amazing conduit to that. And I, I definitely opened up my chakras. All of my chakras were opened this weekend. Well, not all of them. Let's just say I was aware of my chakras. And uh, hold on, I got to get a charger for my phone. Nobody's stress. Hold on. back even my even my phone is dead after this weekend I um wow my hair is a disaster anybody watching the video you're welcome this is a true story I um I don't know what I'm doing here here we go I'm settled I definitely enjoyed psilocybin this weekend opened up the chakras um I felt a real connection to myself that I hadn't felt in a while. I've definitely have bouts and have had bouts of feeling disconnected from my essence and ego has been driving the ship a little bit and also managing all of the life events that I have endured since 2017, which is, which literally has been every type of life stress you could imagine. I have the badge of wearing. <laughs> but this weekend was really eye opening for me in like third eye opening type of way. In a third eye open eye opening type of way. I I realized how much slowing down opens up so many doors and pathways for you. It, how slowing down your day to day opens your eyes to how you've been occurring in your relationships and also slowing down allows you to realize how much rest you really need. You know, when people go on vacation and they're like, Oh man, by day five, I've just started to relax. It's you didn't even really relax those five days your body was alchem alchemizing itself and acclimating to the new velocity that which you were functioning at by slowing down your body was feeling like it had to take its time to trust that you weren't going to speed right back up so it takes four or five days for you to truly relax. That's how fast we're living. That's how fast we're living in, in this society. We are living so fucking fast that it takes us five days to start to relax. I don't know about you, but to me that seems not just exhausting, but toxic. It seems like it takes us an awful long time to get to a place of true relaxation, which means that we are functioning from a place of anxiety 
most days and most time of the day. And I'm aware of that. And that awareness is a step in, in the direction of changing it and starting to heal. I'm aware of how much rest I need. And I need a lot more than I gave myself these past few years. So in slowing down, you create space to really be aware. Slowing down creates a space of awareness. And awareness is freedom. It truly is personal freedom. Self-awareness is the beginning to you really existing in a, a state of, of vulnerability and presence. And in order to be truly present, we've got to be rested. It's hard for you to be present from a place of anxiety. Literally, the nature of anxiety isn't present. It's future. Anxiety is a, is a what's, what's to come mentality. A worrying mentality. Anxiety is stress over the future. And you can't be present from that standpoint. And so it takes us a few f- fucking days to become present. Because when you're saying you're rested, you're not just saying you're rested or, or relaxed. What you're really saying is you are present. Your body has acclimated to a pace in which it can rest and it's taken a week to do that and when you're rested I truly believe only from that place can you be present so here's hoping my listeners out there take time to figure out how to be more present and take time to figure out how to create more space you need to be able to create more space for yourself regularly to find time to just be and relax, truly relax. And I think it takes a practice. I think it really does take a a practice to find moments of relaxation because I honestly think if you immerse yourself in a lifestyle of health from all directions, meaning your sleep, valuing your sleep, your diet, your exercise, your sun exposure, your community. I truly believe if you start to implement and give energy to each of those spaces that you'll start to be able to actually function full in full capacity. So, um, I believe that we can do it. It's within us to be able to achieve that state. I don't think it's not, I don't think it's, it's, it isn't without its difficulties. It is challenging, but you owe it to yourself to find ways to integrate each one of those aspects of health regularly. And by doing so, It won't take you five days to feel relaxed. You'll start to create that homeostatic sense of calm and well-being quicker and you won't need as much. Most disease is caused by stress and most stress, I believe, is caused by exhaustion and pouring from an empty cup. So... I'm hoping that my listeners can find some space for that the way I did this past weekend. And I hope you can get your hands on some psilocybin to also help you facilitate that. (laughs) Now, this is a Dr. P episode. We will discuss more about my weekend when I've had some time to process. I need some time to process all of the revelations and epiphanies I had about myself over the weekend and also how much I connected with the plant medicine and also how I connected with 
my friends. I did a lot of new things and I put my friends in uncomfortable situations because not only do you grow more in places of discomfort, but you also bond and create deeper and forge new depths of your bonds with your friends. And I didn't tell them 100% what we were doing, but I put them in uncomfortable scenarios so that we could have (laughs) a bonding ceremony. (laughs) So it was magical. It really was a a magical weekend, and we'll get into it um, next week. We also have more uh, a grief episode that we're going to do and we ha- we have some book some authors coming up and um a couple guests so a lot of fun episodes on the horizon if i sound like this is because i have taken a little bit of an edible and i was uh, i had multiple epiphanies over the weekend so that sort of emotional um awareness can create a little sense of of calm. So I probably sound like Delilah now. Delilah. Do you guys remember Delilah? Okay. Dr. P episode. Let's get into this. Um, let's see. Who is this? Who do we got? This is who? Sarah K. Combson. Who? Sarah K. Oh, so it's like who, but then you say who you are. Got it. Will you peg me? Yes, no, or maybe. I'm going to go for a no. It's nothing personal. It, it's it's totally personal, but it's not. Do you feel me? It's um, just a personal preference. I don't I don't know that I want to peg anyone. To be completely honest, I don't know that that's in the, in the books, in the cards for me, or the books or the newspapers. To if I'm being completely fucking honest, I don't think it's in any written scripture for me to peg anyone. It's uh, I don't not condone it. Do your thing live your life. If you want to get pegged, get freaking pegged. I mean, I'm a woman. That's all I've been is pegged my whole life. So maybe that's why, uh, for me, because I enjoy being the peggy that I necessarily don't want to be the pegger. So peg away, live your, live your life and live your truth. And I hope you find solace through all the pegging. (laughs) Texas Nate, TX Nate, I'm assuming is Texas Nate. I was trying to ask, do you believe in heaven or hell or a life review when you pass? Wow, that's a big question from pegging to heaven or hell. <laughs> that should be a book title. I I think in the religious description of what heaven and hell are or is, I don't necessarily believe I don't believe they're pearly gates. I don't believe we're up in the clouds. I don't believe that there's one dude in a robe with, I don't know why, but I imagine God having a trident. Maybe I'm confusing Poseidon with God. Or maybe I'm confusing God with Odin of the Norse mythology. Regardless, I'm imagining a dude in like a fucking really fancy, expensive silk gray robe. It's not white. It's gray. It's like a, it's like a stone. And for some reason he has a crown. I don't know why he has a crown, but he has a crown. Cause he's like, I'm God fucking bow down bitch. And he's got a trident and also very expensive handmade leather sandals, which kind of goes against like his whole dogma. It's like, how are you going to create such a beautiful place and, and promote peace and harmony, but also kill animals for fashion? You know, I really think that your message is a little convoluted and your ethos is confused. That's neither here nor there, but that's how I envision God. But I don't think there's like pearly gates and the gates open and and that homeboy's there. First of all, he probably wouldn't even be there. He'd probably have like an assistant at a desk, right? Isn't there somebody there like checking a list of names? Kind of like it's some bougie club. Is heaven like the bougiest club on earth? There's such a long line. There's gates. There's a person you have to get past. There's like, is there any music? It's probably just all harps. Can you imagine heaven's playlist? Oh, God. What if it's just Eric Clapton's um, Would You Know My Name on repeat? Would you know my name? Tears. Is it Tears in Heaven? If I saw you in heaven. Can you imagine that's that's all that's on 
repeat in heaven? What if it's the saddest songs? What if it's all songs about being in heaven? It's like heaven's the new hell. So I, I don't know. I don't know that I believe in, in that. <laughs> hell sounds awesome. I got to be honest. Heaven sounds a little like too granola, even for me. I feel like there's maidens rinsing people's feet in a crick. Yeah, I said crick. I feel like, you know, there's ethereal women with really long curly hair and no bra, but perfectly perky breasts in very, very thin linen dresses just walking around. It, it feels like heaven would get soups annoying. It feels like heaven would get soups annoying. It feels like there's a bunch of people up there that are just self-righteous because they made it to heaven. Oh, yeah. I, li- I wonder if there are like people up in heaven who are like, just preachy about being there, but then they evaporate and go down to hell. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. If heaven wasn't like a one way ticket, if you had to like keep your place in heaven somehow and you had to be on your best behavior, how fucking crazy would you go? Does that sound fun to you? It does not sound fun. In fact, it sounds very fucking stressful. Heaven sounds stressful AF. And you know, if there aren't puppies up there, If heaven's not filled with puppies and dairy that doesn't bother my gut and rosé that doesn't bother my head or my body, what's the fucking point? If I can have rosé ice cream and puppies in heaven, I don't want to go. So so is that just my heaven and everyone has their own individual heavens? That seems a little fucking unlikely. That seems unlikely. And I also don't like the idea that heaven only exists after I die. Why? Why? Why come? Why come I can't have it now? You know? I want it now. And hell just sounds more fun. There's cooler people down there. Not everyone. Obviously, the murderers, rapists, and pedophiles are not cool. But hopefully there's, like, levels to all this. There should be some sort of hell there there should be some sort of like heaven and hell hierarchy, right? There should be some like within heaven, you got tears. You've got your, you've got your like first grade teacher level. You've got your like volunteer in third world country doctor level. And then you've got like your Deepak Chopra and Oprah level in, in hell. You've got your pedophile, murder, and, and rapist level. And then you got your, like, you know, fucking Ray Liotta level. I don't think Ray went up to heaven. He played and portrayed too many bad guys on, on in cinema. And I think God probably got confused and thought that Ray Liotta actually was, in fact, a, a drug-addicted mobster. And he went straight to hell. You got your Ray Liotta level. And then you got your, like friggin your your Hitler level right that's hopefully those people are not all partying in the same room is all I'm saying you know we've got to separate the sections of hell so that we keep it fun we got to keep it fun not creepy so I that's what I I see it, it just sounds more fun to me as long as there's some boundaries within the hell environment so I don't necessarily believe in the traditional ideology of heaven and hell. I think you can create those worlds within your lifespan here on earth. I think we have the ability to exist within those environments while we're alive. And our mind is what creates that. Your mind can create a version of heaven and your mind can create a version of hell. Your, your mindset is what creates your reality. And for me, I've been lucky enough to function from a place of, I've talked about this before, eternal optimism. And I'm not saying that's the healthiest way to, re- to exist. It's how I've existed. And I, I've spoken about it being a form of preservation, a form of survival for, for what I had endured as a little girl and what I needed to overcome as a young woman. 
But I do believe that you have the ability to access both of those ideologies while you're alive. So do I believe in them? In that sense, I do. But not in the religious way. I believe in them in a spiritual way and in a an accessibility um, to your mindset and how you manipulate your mind is what can create the heaven or hell on, on earth. Hope that made sense. A Tuck 515. That's an interesting name. Can we fucking burn one when you come back to Syracuse? Well, you know, here's the thing. I don't like to share joints unless I'm with my family. Nothing against you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Only because, let's be real, dude. I don't know where your mouth has been. Or girl, I can't tell with your photo. I don't know where your mouth has been. And I just saw a video of a girl who got a staph infection on her chin from making out with some dude in a beard. And I'm soups on alert right now. So wash your beard. I keep spilling stuff on me. I recorded a podcast with Tully today and I spilled water all over myself. So no, we can't burn one when I get back. Well, we can, but it, it'd be separate. And then, you know, come to a show, possibly. I can't guarantee I can burn one with everybody, but I sure would love to. Dan eats everything. Can you get a fellow cuser to uh, a meet and greet with Tom Segura? When is Tom there? I don't know you. And uh, look, I don't know you well enough to put my name on your experience. You know what I mean? What if I tell Tom, hey, my friend Dan eats everything, wants to meet you. You get to meet him and then you end up being a douchebag. That falls back on me. So it's a hard no. And it's nothing personal again. But I have to protect myself, Dan. And what if you eat Tom Segura? That would be so sad for everybody. Then I got to be the girl who facilitated the man who ate Tom Segura. You said everything. I'm, in, I'm assuming that also means people. Do you feel me? So it's a hard pass. I'm so sorry. Five inches of love. Sounds like a band name or what a guy calls his dick. Is five inches in a blunt good enough? <laughs> I wish I could say no. I really, really want to say no. But man, if it doesn't sound enticing, especially if it's a sub, fucking love a sandwich. If it's a five inch sandwich in a blunt and we reverse that, hello. We got a pretty sweet Tuesday afternoon, buddy. Now you're speaking my language. But I don't know if you watched last week's episode. I am embarking on a year of celibacy. So if if that um, is you referring to your penis and it's a hard pass, good luck. Give me the blunt. Let's see what else we got. Tigers, Tigers G55. On average, how many dads slide into your DMs daily? A lot. A lot of daddies are slip sliding into the DMs and keep coming. We love to see it. Keep shooting your shots. I'm, I'm going to do a special like dad show, a live show just for the dads, all the single dads out there, all the divorced dads, the widowed dads. You guys are going to have a special show for you. And I'll have a gay guy on and a couple ladies to satisfy all types of dads. And we're going to have a blast. So keep sliding in those DMs. Tony, Tony, Tony Hoffman. Why can't I get motivation to go to the gym? Well, for one, you, you may have too many distractions that are in the way and not the right type of distractions, which more or less are cues to create a new routine for yourself. For me, I need, I need visual cues to help me along the path of creating a, a new habit. And the gym was hard for me to get into. I go regularly now and when I don't go, I'm, I'm missing it because I am uh, somewhat addicted or it's become a habit rather. And, and when habits are, are second nature, once a habit becomes sec second nature, then it becomes behavior, a behavior pattern. So it, there's steps to becoming motivated and there's steps to creating new habits. And I think understanding why you want to go to the gym can create a motivation for you. Why do you want to go? And if you say it's to attract girls, well, that's a motivation. But there's more underneath that that we can unpack. But if it's really that, then put up a picture of, the, of your dream woman. 
whoever it is, put her up, put her up in your bathroom and look at her every day. And that should be a cue for you to go to the gym. But it's really important for you to find what your motivation is, why you want to do it. And know that it's not going to be easy. It's, it's never easy. You almost have to become addicted to the discomfort, knowing that the discomfort is the only thing that yields growth. Discomfort really is the only thing that yields true growth. So you have to find a way to accept the discomfort, knowing on the other side that there is growth and there will be a real ROI on your effort, a return on investment for your effort. We all need some sort of ROI, some sort of. We're all looking for that. And it comes in different forms. So for you, you have to understand that this path to create motivation is going to be really fucking uncomfortable. So you you have to create a a pathway to your goal that helps you create the the habit to get there. I put my gym shoes out. I've got my gym gloves out. I've got my gym bag right by the door. That's a cue. It's a visual cue for me to go, I need to go to the gym. And then I go to the gym. And you have to find out what that is for you. Now, for me, my motivation really is mindfulness in everything that I do. So I know that when I am more exercised, when I am... uh, when I have raised my, my heart rate, when, when I have sweated, I know those days when I do that, I am able to be more mindful. I know the days that I don't, that I am less mindful. So I have made it up in my mind that it's better for me to be more mindful. I'm getting more things done. I'm seeing that ROI. I'm more prolific. I am more productive. And I, and I am aware of that. So I'm also aware when I'm not as productive or present. And those are the days that I'm not going to the gym or the days that I'm not eating as clean as I normally do. So why can't you get motivation to the gym? It might be your environment. You might need to put a new color on your walls. You might need to open up your windows. You might need to let some light into your life a little bit. However that you, however you receive that, however you interpret that, something has to change and it could be something as simple as the paint color on your walls. And also minute changes create immense growth down the road. So don't discredit making smaller changes. Sometimes it's easier for us to create a new habit by creating smaller changes within our already existent quote unquote routine that generally hasn't been working for us. So for me, you know, I know what makes me less motivated and it's if I ever drink more, if I ever eat unhealthy, if I'm watching something that's kind of dark or terrifying, those things can all create a mood that is heavier than a mood that I need to be productive, a lower vibrating mind a st- a mindset so you also have to ask yourself what are you consuming that is contributing to your lack of motivation you may not even know it you may be completely oblivious to the fact that you are consuming things on a daily basis that are creating the weight that is prohibiting you from having the energy to be motivated Because motivation takes energy. And the way to get energy is to change your state. And the way to change your state, the easiest is movement. Movement and increased heart rate. And exposing your, your body to a stressful yet controlled environment like cold exposure, even sauna, that, that, um, heat exposure, having those elements 
blast your body with the correct stress or response can help create motivation. High-performing athletes, high-performing CEOs and entrepreneurs and, you know, people like Elon, Elon Musk and, you know, like Joe Rogan all have this sort of routine and it includes hot and cold exposure and the other elements that I described and, and tactics that I described. So I hope that resonated with you, Tony, and that you're able to f- first unpack why you can't get motivated and first unpack what, what you want from this. What is your end goal? My end goal is to be more mindful and having a healthy body helps a healthy mind, helps a healthy body. As above, so below. It's all connected. And it's important for you to know what your goal is and to identify that and to make a switch in your life. Let me know how it goes. I hope, I hope it goes well. Let's see what else we have. Majoa, 1996. I feel like I've met you. Would you rather have your feet poked with chopsticks or put icy hot on your pussy? <laughs> I love the array of questions when we do Dr. P. I never know what I'm going to get. And once in a while, I'll look ahead, skim through, and if there's anything I need to sit with a little longer, I will. But most, more often than not, I, I, I just spitball these to you guys. But every now and again, I realize why it might be important to just sort of categorize things when we go from a question of why can't I get a motivated motivation to go to the gym to would you rather have your feet poked with chopsticks or put icy hot on your on your pussy? I don't know how I can answer that. I'm going to have to... Uh, see, I, I have personal experience with this because I was with a fella who accidentally... Well, I won't say accidentally. He bought this temperature changing lube. And thought it would be a good time. I probably have talked about it on this podcast. But we've done over 300 episodes. So I can't exactly remember. I'm almost positive we've talked about this. He put lube on me. And my my peach swelled up to the size of a peach. So. uh, And let me tell you. I looked like I belonged on the. uh, (laughs) Georgia State sign. It was a disaster and I'm still emotionally scarred from it. I I will never emotionally recover from that. But the thought of also having my feet poked is equally as nightmarish. This is a real tough one. This is a room divider. And only because I've already had the experience of the puss and I know how bad it was, I'm going to have to go with the feet poke. But I don't want either. And I hate when you guys do either or. I fucking hate it because it puts me in a real pickle. Real, real freaking pickle. Let's do two more questions. Sleepy Slim 96. Any tips for dealing with stupid ass people? Also, how do I politely end a conversation before it starts? Well, I don't know how you can end a conversation before it starts because essentially it hasn't started. So why would you need to end something that hasn't begun? But tips for dealing with stupid ass people. This is a very telling question to me about your mindset because it sounds like you're irritated. And it sounds like people are really annoying you right now, which tells me you have some anxiety. And I'm going to guess that you don't sleep well, just from your screen name, Sleepy Slim 96. I'm going to guess you have trouble sleeping as well. I could be wrong. I'm going off of a complete unknowing of who you are. And this is a total guess. And maybe I'm wrong. But it sounds like you're irritated with the world a bit. You got some frustration in you and some anger. So I'm going to guess you have anxiety, a little bit of anger issues, and problem sleeping. And I really hope you see this and respond and let me know how, how uh, close I am to the truth. I'm, interest- I'm genuinely interested in that. And I don't think I'm saying anything that is brown- groundbreaking. I was going to say brown breaking. <laughs> groundbreaking. I think... Um, I've got to put some more lip lip chap on right now. I'm taking Accutane and it is really drying. I got that greasy Sicilian skin I have, and I get breakouts like a teenager. 
back to sleepy slim i'm gonna guess that you're tired you have anger management issues and you have anxiety because you're telling me you're having a hard time dealing with stupid ass people which tells me you might be attracting stupid ass people into your life and usually the people we spend time with are the people we think we deserve people are a reflection of our self-worth so i'm gonna guess that you're hanging around a bunch of stew nods and you might not have the most self-confidence you might have a poor feeling, uh, a lacking of self-worth. And it sounds like people irritate you. How do I politely end a conversation before it begins? <sighs> I want to hug you, first of all. And I want you to get into a workout routine. You sound like you have a racing mind. And one of the greatest antidotes to a racing mind is to literally go racing go run Ch go go have a foot race with your neighbor's kid go for a walk around the block roller skate get on a bike walk your dog skip through your house do cartwheels across your front lawn go jogging go skiing go snowboarding go for a hike go for a fucking crawl i don't care what you do but move because a majority of our mental anxiety can be combated with physical activity. And even after you raise your heart rate and get some exercise and sweat it out, you may not have worked the bitch out. That's what I say. I text my cousin. I got to go work out the, be the bitch or the beast. Killing the monster. I have a couple euphemisms for working out. But mainly, it's, it, I go and, and I work the bitch out of me. You got to work the bitch out of you a little bit. You got to work out the demons. You got to exercise the demons. And even then, even then you may still have some existing anxieties. Like I was saying before, a lot of us are functioning from a place of anxiety. And our homeostatic state of being is this high, like anxious hyperactivity state of mind now there's a difference between vibrating higher and functioning from a high place of anxiety in a place of high anxiety high vibrations and high anxiety are not created equally and in fact one hinders the other you have to beat one down in order to achieve the other you have to combat your anxiety in order to achieve a higher vibration. So you sound like somebody who could, who could benefit from some mindfulness. You know, it sounds like you're dealing with a lot of frustration and, and anxiety and probably a little bit of insecurity. And I'm, I, I don't want you to go through life being frustrated by people. That's not to say that people won't frustrate you, but that's different than being frustrated by people. People frustrating you is situational. People frustrating you is, is an objective experience. You being frustrated with people is a behavioral pattern. You waking up and just being frustrated is not you dealing with the world. That's how you deal with the world. That's not you reacting to situations. That is your reality. So you have to really differentiate where you're coming from when it comes to this frustration. And I want to have a good experience with people. I just spent a weekend with the greatest people I know. People who have frustrated me from time to time, and I have frustrated them, but by whom I am not frustrated with, by whom I do not feel frustrated by. And that's a huge gift. It may be cliche, but people are the most wonderful and magical aspects of life. And I would hate for you to continue to go through life missing out on that because you haven't figured out your source of frustration, which is within you. You have everything within you to heal yourself, everything. And the first path 
way to healing is, is awareness and being aware of what triggers you. So I think you're not asking me to deal with how to deal with stupid ass people. And you're not asking me how to politely end a conversation. You're asking me to identify the very thing that is causing you frustration, anxiety, insecurity, and anger. And only you can answer that for yourself. But I hope that this has made you a little bit more self-aware to the fact that you have everything you need on the path of your own healing to help you get on that path and that you deserve it and that I want you to experience people and look forward to a conversation. Growing up, I was very fortunate to have a father and a mother who both truly enjoyed human beings who both truly enjoyed making people feel seen and heard and were an advocate for people. Both of my mother and father spoke to people equally. They treated people equally and they were so respectful of people's emotions and emotional state for the most part, generally speaking. And they did that with a really small box of tools. They maybe had a hammer in their emotional toolbox and still needed help being taught how to use it. See, each of us has tools. We're, we're born with a couple. We get some imprinted on us by our parents. And then hopefully we develop our own new set of tools for ourselves. And let me restate that. Not everybody has that. We all are sort of born with different tools. Some of us are born with none. And the goal is to create new tools for yourself to break the patterns of others. I really don't think you can heal an old pattern with an old tool. And I don't think you can heal an old traumatic event with an old tool. I think that old tool just replays that traumatic event. I think you need new tools. You know, if you're a victim of trauma and your tool is to just dwell on it and to victimize yourself, well, that tool doesn't fucking work. You've got to be aware of it. You, you have to know that you're worth healing and you have to find ways to discover your self-worth. That's a new tool. So Sleepy Slim, I hope you know that you can discover new tools. You have tools within you. And you can heal the part of you that is hurting so much that it's preventing you from wanting to experience other people. I hope that for you. And let's do one more question. Um, Nobody asks, is the squirt mostly pee and does that matter? Well, and there we go this has been a roller coaster of a Dr. Peluso episode, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ay, ay, ay. It, you know, it is a, it is a mixture. It's kind of pee. It's a liquid much like pee. And you know, are you a girl? I can't tell if you're a girl or a boy. Uh, I taught myself how to squirt once in a hotel room. It was the first and last time I did it. I was afraid I was going to leak everything out. I felt like a, you know, like a a pool that had a hole in it. And I I didn't know if I had a reserve tank. You feel me? I felt like, I felt like the gas was leaking out of my car and I panicked. I didn't know. I didn't want to be that dehydrated, but I don't think it matters. It's sanitary and It's not anything that's going to, you know, it'd be cool if it was like an acidic squirt and we could use it at our will and shoot it at people. But this, we're just having a good time. You know, that's not anything I really wish, but, um, it's, it's, it is kind of pee. Okay. There's magical stuff in there too, but it's mainly pee and, uh, you know, just probably a little bit of fluid as well. Oh God, what is this lighting on my cheek? That was wild. Whoa. Um, 
I guess my my lighting is a little off on the other side of my podcast. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm talking and there's just this huge shadow in my face. Yeah, yeah, squirts mainly pee. Wow, this has really gone into a very, very educational section of conversation. I hope each and one, every one of you who sent in questions got some inspiration, motivation, and a desire to change. I think that's a beautiful place to start to live a more full life. If you guys want to submit your questions, you can submit them on my Instagram every Sunday and Monday. That's Instagram.com forward slash Jesse May Peluso, and it'll be on my Instagram story. You can also email me if you'd like, Jesse May Peluso comedy at gmail.com to ask me a question or get some advice and we will put it on the podcast. Wow. This is like a beautiful sunset lighting. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm overlooking the Serengeti. You guys are great. I appreciate your questions. I appreciate your support and we'll talk to you next week.